All right, so like imagine uh, you're watching a marathon and you see this runner who's just crushing it, you know, just blowing past everyone. Yeah, totally leaving everyone in the dust. But even like the best runners of the world can't just sprint the whole way, right? Oh, absolutely. You have to pace themselves, right? right? They need to conserve their energy and you know find those moments to recover or they're going to risk burning out before they even hit the finish line. That's kind of what we're seeing with SPY today. I mean, it's been on this incredible run, but today it pulled back to this like kind of interesting support level at uh, $585, almost like it's taking a breather. It is a great analogy. And I think what's really interesting is that, you know, this pause or this breather that we're seeing is happening right after, you know, a period of really, really strong gains. So it makes you wonder, right, is this just like a quick pit stop or is SPY starting to feel the fatigue? Yeah, is this like a sign of things to come? Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's dig into that. We've got a couple charts here. So first, we've got the three-month candlesticks chart to you know, give us that visual representation of the price action. Sure. And then we'll bring in some of our favorite tools, you know, the 50-day moving average stochastics and MACD. And, you know, just remember that these are just tools... They help us see the story that the market is telling, but they don't predict the future. Right, exactly. But they can give us some pretty good clues. So let's start with that three-month chart. Uh, what jumps out at you right away? Well, I mean, the upward trend is just undeniable. SPY has been on a tear. It really has. But what I find so interesting is the way that this recent pullback is happening right near the highs. Yeah, it's like our marathon runner. You know, they're approaching the peak of the hill and they stumble a little bit. You start to wonder if they have enough stamina to keep pushing forward. Exactly. And that support level at $585.75 becomes really, really critical. Think of it like a safety net for the price. Okay. So then how does the 50-day moving average play into all this? That yeah. green line we've got on the chart. Right. So the 50-day moving average is basically giving us a smoothed out version of the price action over the last 50 days. It just helps us cut through the noise and see the bigger picture trend. And SPY has been trading comfortably above this line for, you know, quite some time. Right, which is a sign of strength. But now with the price dipping down towards it, we have to ask, you know, will the 50-day moving average act as a springboard, propel SPY back up? Or will it give way and allow for a deeper pullback? So it's like a battle between the bulls and the bears right here at this crucial juncture. Precisely. Yeah. And this is where those momentum indicators you mentioned, stochastics and MACD, can give us some additional insights. Okay, let's dive into those. First up, stochastics. Yeah. Now, for someone who might not be a chart wizard, how would you explain what stochastics is actually measuring? Yeah, so think of stochastics as a gauge of buyer enthusiasm. So it's telling us how strongly buyers are pushing the price up at any given moment. And what's interesting is that Stochastics has been quite high for much of the past year. A lot of excitement, mm -hmm. a lot of momentum behind this rally. Yes. But even the most enthusiastic buyers need to take a break eventually. Remember our marathon runner. Right. Even they need to slow down and catch their breath. Exactly. And that's what I find so interesting about this recent dip in Stochastics. It suggests that maybe, just maybe, some of that buyer enthusiasm is starting to wane. So a potential crack in that bullish armor. Perhaps. It's definitely something to keep an eye on. All right, now let's talk about MACD. I know this is another one of those momentum indicators, but how does it differ from stochastics? Yeah, so while stochastics focuses on the price action itself, MACD takes a slightly different approach. It uses moving averages to try and spot shifts in momentum. Okay, and what's MACD telling us right now about SPY? Well, right now it's hinting that this upward momentum we've been seeing might be starting to sputter. You know, if you look closely, you'll see that those MACD lines are getting closer together. So potentially another sign that this upward trend is losing a little steam. Possibly. But remember, we need to look at all of these indicators together to really get the full picture. All right. So we've covered a lot of ground already. We've got this clear upward trend in SPY, but there are some signs of potential weakness emerging. This pullback to the support level, stochastics dipping, MACD hinting at a slowdown. And all of this is happening in the context of an incredibly strong run for the market. It's natural to see some fatigue set in after such a powerful rally. Like our marathon runner hitting that wall. Exactly. So the big question is, will SPY power through and continue its upward journey? Or will this pullback to $585.75 turn into something more significant? We'll be right back. Help us continue making thought-provoking podcasts. All it takes is a like and subscribe, and our channel can grow. Thanks. You know what? We're not going anywhere. We're just going to keep this conversation going. Stick mm. with us. Yeah, it really is like we're watching a movie, you know, waiting to see what happens next.
will SPY pull through this or will it kind of, you know, stumble and take a tumble? Okay, so let's break down those possibilities a yeah. little bit. First, let's imagine SPY decides to channel its inner Rocky and fights its way back up from this support level at $585. What would that look like on our charts? Well, we'd want to see those indicators we talked about start to, you know, flash some positive signals, like, for example, that dip in stochastics. We'd want to see that reverse course and start climbing again, you know, indicating that the buyers are regaining control. Okay, and what about MACD? What would we be looking for there? Yeah, so with MACD, we'd hope to see those lines avoid crossing over. So basically a reversal of those warning signs we were talking about earlier. Precisely. Yeah. And then, of course, the price action itself would need to confirm this shift. So we'd want to see SPY move decisively above that $585.75 level. Like it's breaking through a barrier and start making you know higher highs and higher lows again. Okay, so that's our rocky scenario where SPY regains its footing and continues climbing higher. But what if this pullback isn't just a minor setback? What if it's the beginning of something bigger, like a more significant correction? Ah, uh, yes, the heartbreak scenario. So in that case, we'd likely see SPY break down below that $585.75 support, support level. And once that support is broken, it's like removing a key pillar. You know, it could trigger more selling pressure. Like a chain reaction almost. Yeah, which would be a pretty strong signal that momentum has shifted to the sellers. And if those MACD lines do end up crossing over yeah. with the blue line dropping below the red signal line, that would kind of add more evidence to the idea that the trend is reversing. Right. Absolutely. But here's the thing about corrections. They can actually be healthy for the market in the long run. You know, think of it like a tree shedding its leaves in the fall, you know, to prepare for new growth in the spring. Corrections can help shake out some of the excesses and they can create opportunities for new buyers to enter at lower prices. So it's all about perspective. A correction might seem scary in the moment, but it can actually set the stage for a healthier market down the road. Exactly. It's just part of the natural cycle. But for a long-term investor, a correction can actually be a buying opportunity. So they might actually welcome a dip in the market because it allows them to buy more shares at a lower price. Right. Of course, they should always do their own research and consider their own risk tolerance. But a correction can be a chance to add to their positions in companies that you know they believe in for the long haul. So it's about turning a potential negative into a positive depending on your investment goals. Now, beyond those technical signals we've been discussing, what else can give us clues about SPY's direction? Well, it's always wise to keep an eye on the broader economic backdrop. And right now, there are a lot of moving pieces out there, mm. a lot of uncertainties. Yeah, we are in kind of a strange time, politically and economically. Yeah. It's a lot of mixed signals. Exactly. And all that uncertainty can lead to increased volatility in market. So even if we see some you know, positive technical signals in SPY, that broader economic picture could still weigh on the market and make it harder for that uptrend to resume. So it's like trying to run uphill against a strong wind. You know, even if you're a strong runner, it's going to be a tougher climb. That's a great way to put it. Okay, so we've got the technical picture with the charts and indicators, mm -hmm. and we've got the fundamental picture with the overall economic backdrop. The market is constantly evolving, throwing curveballs our way, but by paying attention to these clues, we can at least try to make sense of what's happening and make more informed decisions. Okay, so based on all the evidence we've gathered, what are your thoughts on which path is more likely for SBY? Will it bounce back or head into a correction? Well, if you press me for a prediction, yeah, and I know it's dangerous to make predictions about the market. Of course, no one has a crystal ball. Right, but based on what we're seeing right now, you know those signs of waning momentum in the indicators? the pullback happening near the highs, and those overall economic uncertainties, I'd say I'm leaning slightly towards the possibility of further weakness in the short term. So you're thinking SPY might need a bit more rest before it can attempt another strength. Yeah, that's my current assessment. <laughs> but again, the market loves to surprise us, so we need to stay flexible and be prepared to adjust our thinking as new information emerges. So buckle up. It could be a bit of a bumpy ride for a while. That's always a possibility when you're dealing with the stock market. Any last words of wisdom for our listeners today? Just remember, market fluctuations are totally normal. It's part of investing. Like a roller coaster. Don't panic. Don't make those quick decisions based on what's happening in the market today. Stay focused on those big goals. Thanks for having me today. It's been great talking about all this with you. It's been my pleasure. And to everyone listening, remember, knowledge is power, especially when it comes to investing. So keep learning, keep asking those questions, and stay curious. Wherever I am. Remember, like us if you like us, and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when something new is posted. Thanks.
be well and prosper. Wherever I am.